and welcome for another treatment of the International Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is for February the 16th, 2020. And today's title is Kingdom Seeking Prayer. And it's the winter quarter, lesson number 12. And it's taken from Matthew the 6th ver- chapter, verses 19 through 15. Now, a little background information. Of course, this is a continuation of our talking about the Sermon on the Mount. And today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on the Lord's Prayer, how that the Lord had told uh, the people, gave them an example of how they should pray. And that is something that we do need to be really concerned with is is knowing the proper way to pray and the proper things to be praying for. You know, the disciples told the Lord in Luke the 11th chapter, verses 1, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And you know, Brother Paul was talking to the Romans. In Romans 8, 26 through 27, he said, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us, through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So we see in multiple multiple places in the Word of God where the Bible talks about how that God is teaching us what we need to be praying for and what, how we need to approach the throne of God. And we need to be mindful of listening to how God is teaching us how to pray. Now, Matthew 6, 9 through 10, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we know here uh, how that the Lord is showing us how that we need to acknowledge uh, the sovereignty of God Almighty. And we need to be seeking how God's will should be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we know that there is coming a time when all rebellion from the face of this planet is going to be stamped out. We know in Revelations, the 11th chapter, verses 15, where it says, The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, And there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Let me tell you something. You may be getting away with rebellion now. You may be uh, working against the will of God. But there is coming a time when God is going to set up his kingdom on this earth and the Messiah will rule this world and your and and all rebellion will be stomped out. And that is what we should be praying for that day. Now Matthew, the sixth sixth chapter, verses 11 Give us today our daily 
bread. Now notice that the Lord didn't say, and give us a great big huge car that's going to make everybody envious of how much wealth we have. Give us a huge house so everybody will be envious of how wealthy we are. But the prayer is, give us today our daily bread. And we need to be mindful of the fact that yes, my God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. But need and want are two separate things. It's important to realize that when Paul said that to the Philippians, that he was sitting in jail. He was not living in some big mansion with servants. He was sitting in jail, probably eating the same stinky, smelly food every single day and drinking uh, tainted, dirty water and uh, being cold and hot and pretty much well being suffering through the elements. And that is the condition that he was in when he said, my God will supply all your needs. And we need to be, we need to really understand that. There is way too much uh, focus on material things, on power, on authority, on uh, being a big shot of having a wealth and, and this ridiculous amount of wealth in cr some Christian circles these days. And that is completely contrary to how the Bible describes things. Yes, the Bible does say that God will supply all of our needs, but these are the needs. Daily bread, not big Cadillac, not mansion, not having servants. But God does care about us. Psalmist said in Psalms 84 and 11, For the Lord God is a sun in shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. But again, it's talking about your basic necessities when it's talking about physical things. This is Christianity and the way of the cross and the sacrificial death of Jesus did not happen uh, as a get-rich-quick scheme. It, God came to this world and died on that cross to pay the penalty for our sins, okay? Not to make us rich. They are a lot, the majority of the righteous people who have been in the, in the Christian church, who have lived for God, lived godly lives, prayed daily, studied their Bible daily, went to the mission field, laid their lives down for the, for the cause of Christ. People who lived a life of faith, more of them were poor than they were rich. Many more of them were poor then were rich. Okay? Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 12, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now, it's important that we all understand this concept 
of being forgiving to people who wrong us. Uh, remember the parable of the unmerciful servant over in Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 25 through 35. Uh, how that uh, the servant wasn't able to pay his master. And his master forgave that little bit from that servant. And then the unmerciful servant saw his fellow servant who owed him a little bit of something. And he, threw the his fellow servant in jail. And his master found out about it. And they were serious consequences on him for that unforgiveness. And the thing about it is this, if we have unforgiveness in our heart, we can't be forgiven for our sins. And not only that, that unforgiveness, that hard-heartedness, that holding a grudge will make you miserable. It will destroy your life. It will eat at your heart. You have to forgive people so that you can live a happy life. Okay? Because your prayers, it will hinder your prayers for one thing. The Lamentations, in Lamentations 3 and 44, says, You have covered yourself with a cloud so that no prayer can get through. And let me tell you something. Sin can do that. Unforgiveness can do that. It can put a barrier between you and God, and you cannot get your prayers through because of that barrier. So you need, just like the popular song says from the movie, just let it go. Just let it go. It, it ain't worth it. Forgive people. Find it in your heart to forgive them. Pray for uh, that God would put in your heart to be able to forgive them. Okay, Matthew 6 and 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And we need to be praying in our prayers that God would protect us from the wiles of the devil. That God would give us the wisdom to be able to see through the deceptions of the devil where he and his minions will come and try to uh, lure us into deception lure us into thinking that we're doing the right thing when we're actually doing the wrong thing. And they are a multitude of ways that the devil can come to us and make us think that we are in the right when we are in the wrong. That is the devil's favorite trick to pull on Christians is to give them under put them under a delusion to where they think that they are doing the right thing when in fact they are giving themselves over to deception. And we need to be praying daily that God would give us the wisdom to be able to see through that stuff. Okay? Okay, in conclusion, the we need to uh, model our prayers off of 
and hit on the same points that the Lord shows shows us in his example prayers that are in the Bible. And we need to be praying the same way that the Lord showed us to pray and to strike the same themes that the Lord struck in those examples. And we need to aggressively, daily, pray. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.